welcome into Rock Painting 101. Today we are gonna do a fun Zentangle inspired Christmas tree. Now everybody really, really loved the pumpkins we did um, for fall. So if you didn't check out that tutorial, I'll link it above and we're gonna just do this really cool Christmas tree design. So the first thing we have to do is create our tree on our rock. Now I want my triangle to take up as much of my rock as possible. So depending on the size of your rock can be the shape of your tree. It could be a short and wide tree or a long and skinny tree is kind of what I'm gonna end up with here on my stone. So I will start at the top here and just lay a triangle out here uh, to get us started. Now, this rock is pretty smooth, but I'm still gonna go nice and slow just in case I hit a lump or a bump on here. I don't want it to splatter on my stone. Now, when I did my pumpkin, I had a very white rock, so I didn't color it in. I used the white to kind of show through, but on this stone, since it's darker, we're gonna be using some more green on it. So I'm gonna go ahead right here from the beginning and color the whole thing in green. Now, if you don't have paint pens, you can definitely color in with plain acrylic paint as well. This piece of paper under my rock is like perfectly white, so I don't want to doodle on that, but I always like to make sure my paint's flowing before I take it to my rock. But I will speed up filling this in as well. it's all filled in I gave it a second to dry here as well what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my sections for my different Zentangle designs here on the rock um, I'm actually going to turn it upside down so I can see the very tip 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 of the tree um, I'm using my post-it notes because they'll kind of fold with the rock a little bit and here's the thing you have to keep in mind the thickness of your line you want to place your pen down first and then bring whatever you're using to create your lines up to your pen okay so i'm actually going to go this direction first i think i want four sections or so on here so i'm going to place my pen bring this right up to the edge and angle it down the tree and then i'm going to press nice and hard and then create my line straight down the tree Okay, and I'm gonna just repeat that, working my way across. Now, if I'm gonna have four, it should land kind of halfway between my stumps. So again, place my pen first, then get it on there, line it up, okay? And then press real hard on whatever you're using so that you get the curve, so you don't accidentally mess up your curve. Turn just a little bit more, and we'll do one more line here. It'll give us four sections. down to the base trying to go past that baseline all right so now we've got our tree divided into four equal sections now there's so many things you can do that's a zen tangle design or zen doodle design i like to say zen doodle more often because zen tangles can be very intricate and use some shadowing and perfection and i like these to be a little bit less um stressful i don't want you to have to worry about it being absolutely perfect so i've got i need a little piece of paper here to doodle here. Keep my paint flowing. Fix the bottom of my tree here. I kind of went over with my brown on my trunk. Okay, so we're just gonna go across each shape and I'm gonna give you four ideas of things that you could put in here. Now you can mix and match these however you want um, or even just get inspired from this and look for other you know, designs and patterns that you could use within your tree as well. Well, um, so the first thing I'm gonna do, this one is gonna create a zigzag going down the tree. I'm gonna start near the top and create triangles, alternating sides. So I'm gonna do a few here and then I will show it to you up close. 
So we're basically doing a triangle on the left, then a triangle on the right, and they'll slowly get bigger and it will create this zigzag design. And you can get as far up to the top as you can without going over the edges. I like to keep the actual zigzag the same thickness going all the way down. So the triangle will just get bigger and bigger. And then once you get kind of bigger, you can actually just do your triangles and come back and fill them in after you've placed them all down on your design. And the good thing about putting the green base coat is if you do make a mistake here, say your triangle point comes all the way to the other edge or something, you can go back with green and easily fix your mistakes like that. Now we're just going to fill in these triangles. That is line one. Um, the next one over, I'm gonna do uh, more of a stripe pattern. You've seen me do this one before. And I'm actually gonna start at the bottom and work my way up to the peak on this one. Um, I like my lines, I go um, perpendicular to each other on this. So I always do three lines and then that way I have a center line that I can fill in with black. So we'll go, um, we'll start kind of with a line that follows the previous pattern. So we'll go one, two, three, like that. And then I always turn and I go perpendicular. So your, your first line will almost make it a, a T intersection. So then you go one, two, three, like that. And we'll just repeat the pattern all the way to the tip. And when you get up towards the top, just take your time, get it in there as far as you can. You might have to kind of get creative with placement just a little bit on the stone. So I always go in and I fill in the center line of each one. So it would be filling in this section here, this section here, 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 like that. So I'll speed some of that up for you. Um, and you'll be able to see the design. All right, so we've got that one done. The next one we're gonna do, I'm gonna do um, a scalloped edge all the way down both sides and it will create almost a circular shape in the center of um, the design. So it will make sense as you see it. So we're gonna just start here at the bottom and create kind of U shapes towards the center. And again, as we get to the top, we're gonna have to just be very careful to get smaller and smaller. So just kind of U shape like this, almost like a wave all the way up the side. like that, and then we're gonna match it on the other side and we're gonna try to have the peaks in the same areas. So all the way from the top. Try not to get them to touch completely. Like that, and now we're just gonna fill in edges here in between and these areas here these little triangle shapes okay and again we have green so if we need to fix or touch up anywhere after the fact we can whether you have an acrylic base or your paint pen base, you can go back with that base coat. So see how these kind of, these two didn't quite point towards each other. We can try to fix that as much as we can. And then if we need to go back with the green, we can. To 
create more of a circular edge on those. So that section is now complete. Uh, the last one we're gonna do here um, I almost want to do just a simple kind of checker pattern to it. So easily enough to do that, we're going to start with our horizontal lines here. Decide how big you want your squares to be. Just space your horizontal lines as evenly as you can as you work your way up your design. Like that. And then you're going to create squares. So you can decide where you want your vertical line to go. And you can also decide, let's just use our post-it. I'm going to actually have it go all the way to the peak. So I'm going to use the same way that I made my lines in the first place. Place my pen down. But I do want to show myself where I'm, I'm aiming. So this is the halfway mark. So I'm going to give myself a little spot at the bottom. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna line it up with my pen, come to the top, line up with my pen. That way I know the thickness of the line. Shouldn't mess up my pattern too much. And there we go. And now I'm just gonna fill it in like a checker pattern. So every other one heading up will be black. Again, I can speed this up, but I'll let you watch. Now, once your ink starts to dry, you can kind of come back through and do some touch-ups here and there. I've got a couple little spots where I filled in and I can see some green peering through. So I'm just gonna go through and touch up a little bit here. And then we'll add a little something to this uh, trunk as well. So you can touch up with your black and anywhere you see that green, possibly popping through. And then you can also come back through, like I said, you can grab a, if you don't um, have the paint pens, you can come back through with like a, a liner brush, a real small brush and kind of add and fix some of these edges. Um, if you feel you kind of went over anywhere or you got a little bumpy line anywhere that you want to fix. something real quick and simple here on the trunk. I'm gonna do just kind of a curved. So you just do one, two, three, and then turn. And do the same thing, one, two, three. I know you can't see that one great a lot, but you can do it here, one, two, three. Oop, that one got away from me there. Fix that line in a second. Okay, just like that. And then when I do these, I like to, same when I did this one, I like to fill in the center line with the black. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna be able to fix that spot on the trunk. We'll get this just a second and we'll fix it. All right, so we're gonna come back in here and I'm just gonna re-add some brown. My brown has got a very thick tip to it because I swapped it out to trade out for my black a long time ago. So I gotta let that brown dry and then we'll reline that area. Add one over here. All right. All 
little touch-ups here and there, but we will call that good. So I hope this inspired you to give this fun, kind of funky Christmas tree a try. They're really fun to do, and the possibilities of what you could put in these are endless. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. We'll be back soon with another fun idea to get you inspired here on Rock Painting 101. See you soon. Bye-bye.